like I like say, when you, like, is that thing on just so I know? <laughs> it is. Okay. Uh, Over a few times. Is that on? You bet. <laughs> is it on? Is it running? Is it on? Turn it on! Is it on now? Okay! I'm Martin, and this is Dudley, and this is our car lot. Today we've got a lot of cars, and we're selling them to you! We got... And I'm a Mountie, and I don't lie because that's just not the Canadian way. He's telling the truth, he's a Mountie. We got a 1961 Pontiac car, and we want to sell it to you! So come on down to Martin and Dudley's, where this week only is Spanish Day. So we got a car and we want to sell it to you. Okay, are we off for what? Is that good? I'm going now. Okay, that must be good. <laughs> Well, we used to have the family birthday parties, you know, and that all the kids used to get up and dance. And one of her birthday parties, we fooled her and we had the birthday cake, and uh, we bought those candles that you can't blow out. Oh, yeah. And that we had a ball with that, you know, because none of the kids were aware of it at that time, you know, so that was good. But... Um, well, she was a very quiet kid, all by herself, eh? But she was tough as a rock. You want me to make some remarks about Trudy? You can. I don't know anything about Trudy. What do you mean you don't know anything about Trudy? Oh, do you? Yeah. Talk about me as a little kid. You're a very interesting little kid. Yeah? Did they dance a lot? And you were more or less being different people. You'd dress up as an alien. You were always somebody. <clears throat> you'd have those puppet shows that you have all the kids. When you'd take their money, their two cents, you'd charge them, go to the store, you and that other little girl, and then break up the can. You'd be say, you'd pay three for a penny, and then you'd sell them one for a penny. Right. <laughs> and put on the puppets, and the little other little girl used to um, collect the money and hand out the can <laughs> and sell the can. Mm. Actually, gotta make a profit. <laughs> and the puppets. The time you did it at the church. And the oh, movies. that was for a friend of yours, right? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't there, but no. I heard about it. <laughs> Trudy was great having around when we were growing up. She would join me at all my parties. In fact, she was ahead of all my parties. In fact, I think she kind of led the parties, especially doing um, some of the dancing that we did. It was it was great. Um, In a lot of the the, uh, the movies that uh, I copied over, she seems to be dancing a lot. Yeah, well, she she was. She you know, she had the rhythm, eh? Yeah, she had the rhythm. Yeah. And that that time when she was doing the hula dance, did you get some of that? Yes. Yeah, well, we, we thought there was just a little bit of tape left, so we kept saying, go, Trudy, keep going, keep going until the film runs <laughs> out. Well, there was some more film than we thought, you know, poor Trudy was getting so tired. I'm tired, Mom, I'm tired. But anyway, she kept going until the film ran out. this um, 
I would call it a Gary Shandling ism where he's always very concerned about his hair his hair has to look a certain way which is pretty much the sort of I just got up out of bed and hit some gale force winds when I came out with outside sort of look um, I don't know is he's just he's got this really weird thing let's experiment with my hair he's dyed it he's shaved it off to nothing there's proof here a picture there okay. that's Gary that's me that's not Uncle Fester from from the Adams family so that there he is that's that's the Gary the bald bald man there um, <laughs> ah! I like my hair yeah. my hair boy that burns me up <laughs> hey you quit laughing at my hair Got the Dennis Miller kind of thing going. <laughs> Speaking of bad hair days, what do you think? I'm gonna get it trimmed. Um, following films, some audiences may find disturbing. I did. I'm actually a crazy person. Okay? I mean, not harmful crazy, just kind of weird. Eccentric. Playful. Like the kind of guy you'd probably find hanging around down at the local watering hole drinking sodas. Because I don't really like alcohol, so or or drugs. There are no drugs in my system. I know it's hard to believe with with what you've seen here and, and heard about me. Um, I'm clean and sober. Okay, I do need a shave, but that's um that's a lot. I'm a lot like Oscar Madison from The Odd Couple. Okay, quit staring at me. All right. You know, and I, I'll never forget though the day, ah, uh, the first time she moved out, and she walked down that hall, you know, from our door, right. and she walked down that hall. My heart just broke, and yet I knew I had to let her go. You know, she wanted to be on her own, but boy, that was a hard day, you know. Yeah. And then after that, she just kept moving and moving, and we just kept being the truckers and the movers. You know? I'm so good at it now; they hire me out. <laughs> as we told her she couldn't move anymore. I think we moved her every year for the last four years, so moving is out of the vocabulary now. It took her a while to move out of the house, but I told her yeah. there's no more moving because I said we moved her not once, but twice, but three times. I think it was four times. And I said, I'm not moving her anymore. Move? Yeah. I told her that is the last bloody move she's made because she, every time we moved, you know, Dad had to move her all the time, and I said, I'm getting too bloody old to move anymore. Oh, you know, Gary has a, he's, he's a, he's an encourager, that's for sure, I'll have to say that he's encouraged me a lot, he, he uh, he's encouraged me to do a lot of dumb stuff, like jumping off a bridge, uh, getting up at six o'clock in the morning to film some sort of opening scene for some Titan something or other and uh, you know dressing up in weird clothes with tin foil on my face and you know boy I mean there's there's been some pretty embarrassing thing that this guy has done to me
wants to know. My friend Dusty wants to know. Dusty Springfield. I'm the man with no kneecaps. Where can I find the man with one eye? The man with one right eye? Or the man with one left eye? I don't know. Well, actually, the man with one right eye, he died a couple years ago. You probably want the man with one left eye. Where is he? I don't know, stranger. Ask his nephew, the man with one tooth. The man with one tooth? What do you call this place, anyway? This is the town with no name. <laughs> Senor. The man with the one-legged dog. No, you're freezing now. The man with no memory? Uh, I might be. I forgot. Uh, no, I ain't him. The man with the dirty fingernails. Oh, no, no, you're doing the mambo with penguins now, you're so cold. The man with no appendix. No, no. The man with two brains. No. The man who'd rather be in Philadelphia. Uh, no, no, he moved. The man with all his bodily functions in perfect working order. Uh, no, he died. The man with one big toe. He said that. Oh, yeah. Is your name Roy? Roy? What the hell kind of a name is Roy? Okay. Okay, I give up. Who are you? I'm the man with no face. What can I do you for? I want the man with one tooth. I know the man with no wisdom teeth. Will he do? No. I need him to help me track down the man with one eye. I'm searching for him and I will travel to hell and back to find him. She was tough as a rock. I can always remember when she was about two or three years old, the older kids were sitting on a swing, eh? Right. And she says to the kid, Donna, get off my swing. And Donna says, I ain't getting off. Trudy didn't say a word. She went to the back, picked up the baseball bat, and wham! Oh my goodness. <laughs> get off my swing. Oh my goodness. Um, You know, Gary, uh, Gary kind of had it rough through elementary school and junior high. You know, kids used to pick on him every now and then. And uh, he just kind of developed into being a, a bit of a tough guy. You know, he kind of considered himself a one-man gang at times. And uh, he used to just, like, you know, take it out on his friends mostly. Uh, and I was probably a prime target for it myself. Uh, you know, being a good friend, though, you, you kind of overlook the, his aggressive tendencies and, and you just forgive him for all those times that he's, you know, done these things to you. But, uh, you know, he, he, 
he was voted most likely to become Batman. Now there is this story going around about Trudy being called Pee-wee. Why? What's the significance? I don't know! Well, actually, I never knew she named Pee-wee until you just mentioned it. Well, then this, well, she was always a very small child. She was always very rambunctious. She was always the one that did the, the like, she was there and she wasn't there. Mm. And it was all I know was like you'd have to really talk to her sister about that because she would know the exact where that came from. All like when I come walking into the family, I was introduced. This is Pee Wee. Who? Pee Wee? Oh, that goes back many years. I don't even know the origin of it. It's just that tree was always called Pee Wee, and the name's always stuck. Mm. Where it comes from? I, I think I was told once or twice, but it's been uh -huh. a long time since I've heard the story. So. Okay, so who knows the story? Uh. Well, of course, my grandparents. Okay. And I, I don't know. I think Dad started it. Yeah. I think Dad started it, yeah. And he called her Pee Wee. And then from then on, we've all called her Pee Wee, you know. Yeah. Because I'm trying to figure out the origin of uh, Pee Wee. Pee Wee? Yeah. Oh, I always called her Pee Wee from the day she was born because she was so little, eh? Huh? But for three summers in a row, she wore the same size clothes. Wow. And I, I just was so worried about her because she hardly ate. She was really picky, you know. But thank God she finally grew. And I kept saying, I want to get you new clothes, eat. <laughs> <laughs> but for three summers she wore the same size clothes. I couldn't believe it because Debbie outgrew them before the season was out. You know? Yeah, yeah. Fast. Trudy, she just stayed little. Okay. So that's where I always called her Pee Wee. Eh? Okay. Well, that makes sense. Nobody yeah. really knew, and it kept directing me to other no, people. No, I always called her Pee Wee from the day she was born, because eh? she was so little. Eh? It took me a long time to find the right person, but I feel like I finally found him. And it was pretty amazing when I did, because uh, he came into a class where I was training at Pure Later, and... I just sort of got some vibes, something was going to happen. What I can tell you is uh, very few relationships that uh, result in marriage, um, anybody remembers how it exactly began. And I know how it exactly began. It was October 25th, and it was on the ground level of the Pirolator building head office that I work in. And I came in, it was Saturday, and uh, I was with a, a woman named Parisma and a woman named Darren from uh, my department, and we were all there to take a uh, course on uh, email. And as we were standing in the room, waiting for something to happen, uh, this woman that you just saw a minute ago, this woman, Trudy Correa, showed up. And I looked at her and I said, uh, well, I know everybody else who's here, so I'm just going to have to assume that you're the teacher. And her response was, uh, yes, that's right. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I didn't bring an apple. And he mentioned about, uh, because he was coming to a classroom, that uh, he should have brought an apple for the teacher. And I said, well, the way I'm feeling today, I'd prefer chocolate. So the next thing I know, next time he came, he brought a Tobu and chocolate bar, so he immediately won my heart. Now the story of Gary and Trudy's first date. Uh, well, I remember it pretty distinctly because Gary had uh, phoned me and told me that he had sent this Christmas card to this gal that had come in to do a couple of seminars on, on their computers. And uh, he said he kind of left it open for an invitation to, to go out for drinks. And he was going to go to this, this pub in his area that he thought that would be kind of a nice neutral area because they kind of lived close, close by. And so he was planning to go to the Scottish pub and have drinks with Trudy if she decided to, uh, to give him a call back. And Friday, December the 12th. Which is going to be a very good night for me. Well, this is going to be a very fun and memorable night for me. December the 12th. Okay, you see that little flashing light down there? Thing. I sent this Christmas card out to Trudy. Told you about that. Put a uh, note in it saying, 
if you're in the mood, give me a call, and uh, maybe we'll go out. And believe it or not, here's your proof. See, at that point, I picked it up. But there it is, recorded for all perpetuity. It's Trudy. All back. And, of course, um, lucky for him, she did. And uh, they set the date and everything and, and went off to the pub to go have these drinks. And, and that pub was closed. It's just kind of continued from there. The, the degree of fate involved in us getting together is just... I mean, it's mind-boggling. There are times I, I, I just sit back and I think about it, and I, I just can't get over it. I mean, we both moved in to uh, poor credit, you know, two blocks from each other in the same month, the same year. I mean, it's just... It's really hard to uh, to comprehend how, how much this is... Uh, wonderful and how much obviously fate and, and, and God has to do with this. I mean, it's just so far beyond uh, uh, just simple circumstance. It's not even funny. I just, I, I'm just so happy that she's found you and you found her. And that makes me so happy because you really seem like soulmates and I pray to God that it lasts forever. You know, I really do. Because uh, she's been a joy to us, a real joy, you know. And I'll never forget. In the garden, you made man and wife. They had their pig from all of paradise. Of all that brought them pleasure. In the cool of the day, they go waltzing out to meet you. Their faces shine and greet you in that lovely garden long ago. In the cool of the day, wouldn't be strange to see them dancing, just like children. Oh